time for Nerdgasm. Hey, what's up guys? Jerry here, AKA Barnacles, and today we're reviewing a new product called Kamigami Robots. Now this company reached out to me because of my experience with the Codegasm series, where I show people with little or no software development experience basically how to program computers. They also knew that I'm into robotics from my coverage of World Maker Faire. So this seemed like a perfect fit because this incorporates both programming and robotics into one little thing that looks like an insect. Now these things are not available in stores right now and they sent me a couple of their prototypes because I had early access. But if you do wanna get a hold of one of these right now, you can go to kamigamirobots.com forward slash barnacles and they're gonna give you 40 bucks off each one of these robots you buy just for watching this video. It's time to see what makes these things tick. All right, now, as I said before, they sent me a couple of their prototypes, which were already assembled. But if you guys buy one of the kits, what you're gonna end up getting is one of these guys. It's basically a vinyl cutout sheet that has all of the parts for the chassis for the robot. Then you're also gonna get the actual plastic coverings for it, depending on which robot you opted to buy. There's actually three of them. The blue one is called the Mitsubi. And there's one called the Goki, which I didn't receive, that's green. And then the Inari, which is red. So I have the Mitsubi and the Inari. Now, if you check out their website, they're already working on new robots. They have three currently, but they're going to expand that as time goes on. Now, the thing that really caught me with this product is I like any toy that has educational value to your children without knowing that it has any educational value because that's how you get them. It's just like when kids play Call of Duty, right? They just think they're playing a game, but no, they're learning military tactics. Ah, that was kind of a crappy example. When they're playing Dig Dug, they're learning how to be miners. But I digress. Actually educating your children without them even knowing they're being educated is just like slipping broccoli into the mashed potatoes, right? It's like what they don't know won't hurt them. So once you pick up one of the kits, you have to assemble it yourself. Now they say assembly time takes about an hour, but honestly, I don't know because I didn't get to go through the assembly process. And after playing with these things for hours, I didn't break anything. So I really had no reason to swap the chassis over. Yet. Now all the parts are made out of nylon and plastic. So they're actually incredibly durable. And these things don't weigh a lot. So you can pretty much just like throw them around, flop them off stuff. I was chucking them downstairs. Um, they don't break. They just don't. I mean, unless you step on it. If you step on it, it's probably gonna break. So guys, within reason. I remember I did a drone video once with a little micro drone and they're like, what would happen if you threw it into the wall as hard as you could? It's gonna break, okay? I'm just saying that generally speaking, they're not gonna break themselves. So if you head over to their website, they actually have really detailed instructions on how to assemble these things. It's page after page, including really detailed pictures accompanied by videos showing you close-ups of how the parts go together. So it should be a pretty no-brainer task to put together and everything's held together with plastic rivets so it's very very easy and you don't need a lot of crazy tools to put these things together all right so once you have your robot built you'll see that there's just a single button on the bottom that when you push it a little light comes on in the in the eyes on the robot light up red and then what happens is you open up the application on either your iOS or Android device now currently there's an app in the marketplace for iOS but all it allows you to do is drive it and play a couple of simple games like freeze tag where you can shoot at the other robot and score points or sumo where you try to push it off a table and score points that way there's actually quite a few really cool games but if you really want to see the programming potential of these you need to go to Kamigami's website and actually sign up for the beta now if you're on iOS they send you a code for a program called Test Flight that's in the App Store that lets you download the beta app. On Android, it's significantly easier, but you do have to apply to get access to it. But once the app is installed, it's absolutely brilliant. It allows you to use all of the sensors in this thing to actually create your own games. You can add things to it, like spin for a certain amount of time under a certain amount of power, or go in a certain direction for a certain amount of time. You can also enable and disable the controls based on scoring. You can define the rules for scoring. You can also change the color of the eyes. You can make them blinks. You can make sound effects play through the phone when something happens, like if you have a laser hit on another one of these uh, little robots. So they interact a lot. And both of these actually have the ability to receive and send IR signals. So they can coordinate and interact with each other through the commands. And the programming interface is dead simple. This is what I liked about it is if you have kids, it's really hard to explain programming to them. You're like, well, see, you have the main device construct and then you have the main loop and then inside of the main. 
Well, you get my point. Trying to explain polymorphism to a kid is probably gonna be difficult. But that's the biggest strength of this, is I would say the hardware is actually cool. It's, it's a very, very neat design. It basically operates on the same principles as an insect. Instead of having tires, you basically have these legs that move around and it allows it to actually go over some pretty cool terrain. Now we took it downtown uh, when I was getting some coffee and we drove it through sand. Yeah, actually it went really well in the sand. I was surprised. Now I'm not saying that these things should be like run through the mud and sand, but God, you know, you know, that's what I'm going to do if you send these to me. Com Kamigami, you knew I was going to do it. If you didn't, then then you probably should have researched me more because that, I mean, I do stuff like that. But, but we took it through the dirt. We took it on the pavement. We even ran it downstairs. Now we found that on stairs, it's really top heavy. So it has a tendency when it falls off stuff to land upside down. And at first I thought, oh man, that's kind of a pain in the ass because I would like to be able to run downstairs. But it's actually cool because these have the ability to figure out if they're flipped over. There's a tilt sensor somewhere in there. So when you're programming a game like Sumo, you want to be able to push the opponent over. If both of these were impossible to flip over, that, that option would be pretty much irrelevant. Now underneath each of the robots is the exact same chassis. The only thing that's different is the top part here, which gives it its look. Your kids also could customize the look on these by like drawing on them. And if you break a piece or something, I don't see why you couldn't just cut out your own little cardboard things and stick them on here. I like customizing stuff. All right, so after spending most of the day making these things run out from behind dumpsters just to freak people out and driving it up and down random people's dirt driveways while they looked at us like, what the hell are you doing here? We decided to bring them back to the house and that's when my son got home from school. So you guys all know Xander, if you've been watching my videos, he's on every once in a while. He is a great kid and I decided that I wanted him to weigh in on the Kamigami robots. I like my Kamigami robot because it's so fast and so cool that it's made out of... Um, nylon. That it's made out of nylon that it just moves fast on the ground instead of in my hand. Like this? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's just funny. Is that funny? Then, when it just moves on the ground, it just goes <laughs> so fast. What does it look like? Does it look like a car or does it look like a bug? It looks like a bug. <laughs> a VW Beetle Bug. I don't know, so do you think we should play with it now? <laughs> so funny. Look at this spin. Can you make your spin? There you go, like that. There you go. You're doing it. So after Xander played around with it for a little while, then mommy wanted to try. So we got Miss Barnacles on the iPad while I was on the iPhone. Got him. Ah, got him. I got you. That's one point, one point for daddy. What was that? Got to get you again. Is that a buzzer? Yep. I got to shoot you in the butt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> gotcha. Oh. No, damn it. Here we go, I'm gonna do a burnout here. Here we go. No! <laughs> back up against the corner here so we can't get our bottom. <laughs> gotcha! Gotcha! Woo! I won! This is not cool. Oh. Now the robots also have a light sensor inside of them so they can detect when the light changes in the room, when it goes to dim, uh, sorry, it goes to dark or lights up all the way. So you can actually trigger actions inside of this. And one of the programs that they have on this thing is actually cool where it makes them afraid of the dark. And when you turn the light off, they just kind of like wig out and then you turn the light back on and then they're okay again. Yep, there it goes. Yay. Is that neat? Way neat. Those lights glow in the... Okay, now when I turned off, it should do that and blink the eyes. There it goes. Go another way, and it should blink the eyes. Yep, there it goes. Imagine if you made a game where you shined a flashlight 
at it. And not only did you have to control your robot, but another person had to track it with a flashlight. And if at any point the flashlight came off the target, it would score a point for the other guy. I mean, it just kind of gives you an idea of how creative you can be with this very simple programming interface and make your own game. So your kids don't just get bored. And if they do get bored, you're like, go program another game. Can't expect adults to do everything. Now, another really cool feature with these guys is if you create a game on your tablet or your phone, you can actually click a button and say, share that with all of the other robots. And you can select the robot and share it directly to it. That way, if you have a whole bunch of friends and everybody's got their robots around, they don't all have to go program the same game. It makes it very, very seamless to share that between the robots. And I thought that that was very, very brilliant. And that is only available in the beta app. So guys, make sure, the first thing you should note, if you're gonna buy one of these things, Go sign up for the beta, even before you receive it, because it could take a couple days for you to gain access to it. Get the beta, because when this thing shows up, you're gonna want that beta app. It is killer. And other than a couple of bugs with freeze ups and some unintended triggers on some of the events, it's actually really solid software. It didn't crash on me once, which I find really strange for beta software. Another really important feature, guys, and I can't stress this enough, is the ability to slow these little buggers down. They haul ass seriously these things cruise across the carpet but the problem is it also makes them very very difficult to control and very twitchy because you have to remember you're working with a phone that has a very very small movement for the d-pad so it's a simulated d-pad with the touch screen so that makes it even touchier but they have a slider in the software that can go between turtle which is very slow and hair which is really really fast and i found if you put it down to about halfway or below that you could actually get these things remarkably controllable and drive them exactly where you want them to now if you put it on super duper high speed i'll tell you right now it will drain the battery faster but oh my god is it fun in addition to the application giving you all of the telemetry on these things telling you about the spin the rotation how much battery you have left everything the beta app has an incredible amount of telemetry on these guys which hopefully means that in the future they might even unlock some advanced features they haven't told me anything about it but i would hope I'm just hoping that somehow they give us a way to actually inject some lower level code into these things because I think it would be awesome. I have to say when we were driving these around in public, a lot of people came over and asked us what the heck these things were because they are really, really unique. You generally see little RC vehicles like this. Either it's a quadcopter flying around or it's got wheels on it. It's, it's very rare to see something remote control that moved like an insect and moves that fast. All right, so now the range on these things is gonna vary a little depending on which device you have. But I found with the iPhone 6, I was able to get about 40 feet away before I lost connectivity line of sight. Now you have to remember these things operate on Bluetooth, which I am so thankful for. I'm getting really, really sick of all the devices that are using Wi-Fi. Sure, it has longer range, but I hate having to leave the internet, join network number Kamigami 7538942 underscore dollar sign uh, just to control it and then have to switch back. I like the fact that it's Bluetooth because no matter what you're doing with your phone, you can just push the power button on this thing, open the software, and it just finds it. You don't have to go fudging around and you don't have to open up the Bluetooth settings and say I want to pair with this device. It's all done in the software which I thought was really really nice. Another thing that I really like about the design of this thing is because everything is basically folded nylons and rivets if you do break something in theory it should be relatively easy to fix with something like a dab of hot glue and it's not incredibly heavy like I said it was like super super lightweight I can take this thing and just be like bombs away <laughs> take this one and be like Ugh. it's fine. Now, the battery life that I experienced on these was about 15 to 20 minutes when I was basically taking it outside and just doing sprints and stuff across the parking lot and playing around with it a whole bunch. Now, when I brought it inside, it seemed like I went closer to a half an hour when we were just flipping through some games and playing on the linoleum surface that's in my kitchen. So all in all, guys, I have to say that these Kamigami robots are absolutely a cool toy. But what I think is more important is that they're this open-ended toy that can basically be anything that your kid wants to be. And by kid, I mean also very nerdy adult. Kamigami did a fantastic job creating these things. The engineering on them is good. The simplicity of them is good. It's something that you can build so you know exactly how it works when you put it together. And the thing that I'm most impressed with is the software. If you see the progression that they made just between their first retail attempt at the application versus the beta that you sign up for and receive, I mean, it's not like a small change. It's like an entire new generation of software and a programming interface on top of that. So I am very confident that as the software progresses, 
progress is you're going to get way more actions that you can actually have these do and you're going to expand your ability to make even more complicated games using the sensors that are already on board and potentially new sensors that you can add to these things or robots that come with more sensors. All right, so to charge these, all you have to do is just plug a standard USB cable in it that comes in the packaging with the kit and you can charge it up off the USB port of your laptop. You can use your iPhone dongle for your AC adapter or what I prefer to do is to use a large capacity USB battery pack that has an integrated cable. This is actually a Vivis night pack. I don't even know if they even make them anymore, but I did a video on it. I'll link it down in the video description. This is my favorite USB battery pack because I've had them literally for years and their capacity hasn't diminished at all as far as I can tell and I use them constantly. But the nice thing is this gives you mobility so your kids can constantly charge up not only their robot but whatever cell phone they happen to be carrying so you can keep the fun going if you're on a camping trip or something like that. But you do want to keep these things away from water. I cannot stress enough. Don't try to make the bug swim kids. So again, guys, if you're looking for a project to do with yourself or you're looking for a project to do with your kids, you really can't go wrong. This is a total package deal. It's very, very easy to use, user-friendly, and teaches you robotics and programming. And I think that that is just absolutely amazing. If you guys want to get $40 off your purchase of these robots, you can go to KamigamiRobots.com forward slash Barnacles. Also have it down in the video description. And that will let you get these for about $59 currently US. But pricing may change as this video moves on. Also guys, I do recommend that you buy at least two of them. The reason being is a lot of the commands that you use in the beta software are IR transmissions to send codes back and forth. And you can even code the transmissions with unique identifiers so that depending on which IR signal you send to the other one, you get a different type of reaction, which pretty much gives you like endless possibilities as far as the games you can create. But if you only have one of them, then those IR signals actually aren't very useful. And by not very useful, I mean not at all. They're, they're, they're not useful at all. All right, guys. Well, if you have any additional questions on the Kamigami robots, leave them down below in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. I also just wanted to end by saying that I'm sorry that there hasn't been a video out for a while. I've been dealing with a mold issue in my house that has been causing me severe health issues, and that's almost wrapped up now. So I'm hoping to get back to a regular video cadence. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being so patient during this time. If you guys want to know more about everything that's been going on with me and continues to go on with me, please head over to Twitter and follow me. I am at Barna please over there. Also come over and follow my Instagram. I post a lot of pictures of everything that's going on and some food and possibly me on the toilet sometimes, but mostly food and technology and, and cool stuff. It's like the toilet thing is just, just to annoy a couple of haters. I'm telling you, these are durable. Look, I'm throwing them at the camera. Ah, 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 it's on the loose. It's on the loose. God, these things look cool. All right, guys, take it easy, and until next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take a moment and subscribe to my channel. It helps me a lot. Also, come over to Twitter. I'm at Barnacles. I'm a real social guy. Also, if you have a couple of minutes, check out some of these many other videos. I made them myself.